Welcome back to another episode. Uh, if you've been following along, uh, I recently published part four of my 50 series GPU deep dive. And uh, what I realized with doing a lot of that initial testing, and I'm still working on uh, getting the rest of these videos out to you. Uh, there's a lot of data to present here. But I did allude to the fact that maybe a budget build really wouldn't be that much of a of a, of a downgrade when you're trying to render videos. Uh, particularly, I was impressed with the overall performance of the uh, 5070, the RTX 5070. Now, I know that's shocking to say, and for myself as well, because I thought, we're going to use this and just absolutely trash this GPU. And the render performance really wasn't that bad. I mean, you've got, go back and check that video, you've got the uh, 5090, top of the list, and then there's a chasm of difference and then you've got 5080 5070 ti 5070 all jammed in right there together and it's was like a 45 second difference anyway go back check that video out maybe you'll come to the same conclusion that maybe there's some benefit here of saving money still getting decent performance in terms of content creation and that's what i'm aiming to look at here like can you put a system together more on the budget you know my test benches and main rig um i didn't really spare any expense i've got i9s the 9900x isn't a slouch i got optimus water blocks on to cool everything i've got delitted thermal grizzly um direct die pro v1s for the main rig um big water cooling setups but can we do something different uh still have an effective um system and still enjoy decent rendering times and um, processing through content creation, particularly through DaVinci Resolve. And I'm going to use uh, Puget Bench to help with the benchmarking and analysis of how efficient this system really is. So we're going to start with a Z790 ITX build with uh, 32 gig of DDR5 memory, 6000 um, XMP profile, and the backbone is the um, the GeForce RTX 5070, and I just realized I don't have my CPU out on the desk. <laughs> but it's an i5, 12th gen, 12600KF. So we aren't going i7 or even i9. We're going i5, seeing if we can save a little bit. That CPU was around $125-ish retail with a... Okay, so it has integrated graphics. We're going to use a discrete graphics card here in the 5070, and we're going to see how we can come out. Now, but I'm trying to use a smaller form factor uh, case, thermal tape. This is the 300. You've seen me build in the 600. That's my penthouse system. You've seen me build a cute PC in the 250 for the misses, and I thought this would be kind of fun. Let's try the 300. Let's just run the list here. Hey, thermal tape. If you're paying attention, the test benches, the open air chassis, the rig, like it's all thermal tape. Uh, we need to work together. Anyway, um, so it it actually eludes uh, itself really well. There's a lot more space in here than I thought. Uh, so this is a bigger chassis than I thought it was going to be. But if what can we put together a custom loop in here? And what I'm going to try is this is. A 360 millimeter radiator with 3120 fans. And I'm going to try instead of an AIO, because you know I don't like AIOs, can we get away with using something like this? And this is a block from Barrow. And I got the idea from when I changed out this radiator for the all in one situation in my Intel test bench. It's the integrated radiator, fan, pump, reservoir combo. And I realized they also had something for the 1700 series that is the pump reservoir combo to sit directly on top of the CPU. And then it's got the standard G one quarter inch fittings and you can run your soft tubing, hard tubing, whatever to a radiator. And we already know that this radiator will fit in this case because it's designed for an AIO, right? It, you can even get a 420 in here, I think. So we're only going to run a 360 and then try this and see how well this works. And it should cool an i5 just fine. If the AIO is going to cool the misses, 
fine. This should perform better. I'm expecting it to perform better with it. Uh, so this ought to really be a fun build. I, I thought that maybe I'm going to keep this and use it for like a second camera for multiple angles and such. But I don't know that I necessarily need it. I have other systems that I can use. And I might, I don't know, this might be a, a, a sell it to somebody who's interested in this. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it now. But um, I'm really interested in building this and seeing if a budget system is actually going to suit the bill and um, do much better for content creation than we anticipated doing. So I have high hopes, high expectations. We'll see if we can meet those. Okay, now that we've got this system built, let's see what it actually does in terms of benchmarking and performance. So we're going to look at the this system, and we went budget. So do we need a flagship device in order to have good um, experience with day-to-day -day computing, productivity? And I'm actually going to look at some gameplay as well, just to do a full, well-rounded evaluation of this system. And so then what can we expect from an older CPU? So we're going to compare the Intel Bench, which is an i9-14900KF, with their both Z790 motherboards. Both have 32 gig of 6,000 megahertz, megahertz memory. Both are gonna use the RTX 5070 Founders Edition. Both are gonna use the OEM IHS, Thermal Grizzly Contact Frame. One has the Optimus Signature V3 in black. The other has the Barrow single unit. I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to review this um, CPU cooler, but that's not for today. We're not gonna worry about the cooling performance, we're just going to worry about the performance of the system. So right into the synthetic benchmarks, you can look the i9 bench versus the budget system. And how far back is it when you're comparing an i9 14900K versus an i5 12600KF? So you're on average 9% slower. I expected that to be a lot bigger, honestly. Right? Is anybody else shocked by that? Um, that shows you that you can beef up your GPU and, and it will carry the system a lot of the ways. What about productivity? This is where we see a little bit of a difference. Um, if you're going to do a task heavy productivity, like V ray, it falls on its face. Um, Geekbench CPU scores, you see a difference there. Uh, but when it comes to the GPU performance, and, it, and you have the two different brains in there, it doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference. The GPU difference is only 4% back. So if you're going to do CPU heavy tasks, you're gonna see a difference. But if you're not doing a CPU heavy tasks, you're not losing all that much. What about um, content creation and rendering? So comparing the budget versus the Intel bench, your basic score versus your standard score, which is the studio version. Your this is this is where you really see a difference here, right? You're like 40 40 ish percent down. Um, so the CPU does matter when you're doing uh, content creation and uh, processing files and and trying to video edit. Um, I don't know what this translates in real life, however, because when I do a quick export, there's three seconds difference. So the encoders are still the same on the video card, and the video card's carrying your, your um, encoding and your export through. So it's not really a CPU task. This was Puget Bench 1.2.0 using DaVinci Resolve Studio 20.0, and it was the H.264 file where it's not as CPU heavy uh, as compared to maybe a um, AVI con uh, container Cineform uh, codec. <clears throat> so I use the most common that I use is H264.mov, and it was only three seconds difference. So that's that's really not that big a deal. But if you were going to use this in day-to-day -day video editing, maybe you might see some issues when you're trying to edit with this. I don't know. I didn't go that far with it, but let's look at gameplay. And here's interesting. 
why don't we compare <clears throat> the 5080 along with the 5070 founders? Okay, so let's just see where we really are. So if you've got Blackmouth Wukong at 1080p and you've got the 5080 and you do cinematic max settings, you got 128 FPS. There was a glitch here. That's why it's 38. Um, it's usually glitches right around that benchmark where they come out of the water and they're going to head toward that ravine and over that log. That's usually where it glitches if it's going to glitch anywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. The test bench with the 5070, you have to drop the settings to very, um, to very high ray tracing. It's You still get to run frame gen and ray tracing, and you end up with 95 FPS. When you put the budget system in place, you don't have to change the settings. You can run the same settings and get the same FPS. Hear that? 1440p. 5080, cinematic, frame gen on, ray tracing on, <clears throat> 130. Um, it drops to 93 when you put the 5070 in. And you have to turn ray tracing off. So if you turn ray tracing off, you don't lose as much. And if you compare the two identical settings with frame gen on, ray tracing off, quality DLSS settings at 65%, you get 93 and the same re the same readings. The CPU is not making a difference here. You are getting the same FPS. I, I, I didn't see this coming. Please understand, a, a lot of people think you have to have the latest and greatest CPU to play games. I, I think what I'm showing here is that this that's, that is myth is going to be debunked. So at 4K, you do see a little bit different because I don't really believe that this card is a 4K card. Um, <clears throat> At 4K with a 5080, you've got quality frame gen on, ray tracing off, you get 104. At um, quality frame gen on, ray tracing off, 116. Um, you have to go to high settings instead of very high settings. You had to drop from cinematic to very high with the 5080. Then if you move, if you keep it at high, these two settings were the same, and you drop from 116 to 92. So you do see a little bit of a drop with the same settings and trying to run it at 4K. But again, I left the 4K data in here if you want to try to run it that way, but it's really not a 4K card. Monster Hunter Wilds, 1080p. You've got 1080p ultra quality, frame gen on, ray tracing on. There's your score, 147 FPS. You have the same settings as the 5080. You drop to 130. Same settings with the budget system. You lose 5 FPS. Acceptable. Good play. 1440p. You run the 5080 settings as shown right here. It's 130. You put the 5070 with the same settings. It drops to 111, still playable. And you drop a little bit more when you put the budget system in place. So you're going to lose about 10 FPS in Monster Hunter Wild. So it does lean on the CPU just a little bit more. <clears throat> and then finally at 4K, you have... 4K ultra quality frame gen on ray tracing off with the 5080 to get a hundred to get a hundred and then the same settings it drops to 84 and 82. Both are actually playable in 4K. Um, so shocking, right? I mean, if you if you like those settings, <clears throat> and then finally Cyberpunk 2077. So you've got um, the 5080 at 1080p, DLSS quality, frame gen on, ray tracing on, path tracing on, ultra settings, 292 frames per second. Same settings with the, as the 5080 on your 5070 with the test bench, 238. So it does take a hit. Um, and, you know, that's there's your, there's your GPU difference. Now what's your CPU difference is roughly nothing. It's about the same. 1440p, you've got a 5080. These settings, 196, same settings above as the 5080, and with the 5070, and it drops to 156. And then if you use the 5070 with the budget CPU, minimal reduction. 4K, again, more of the same. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's up with this. This is the ultra settings, so DLSS quality, frame gen on, ray tracing on, path tracing on, ultra settings, 110. Okay, but... For the 5070, you've got to go um, frame gen on, ray tracing on, path tracing off 
ultra settings to get 120. And it doesn't change if you're going to play with this card in 4K. Um, everybody let that sink in. Like, everybody wants the latest and greatest hardware. Uh, but I think if you pick and choose where you put your money, because there's only appreciable differences with the systems tested. The only difference in this system, it was the same type of chipset, same memory, the same brand even. Um, you had the same system. Now, one was an ASRock board, one was a Gigabyte board. The Gigabyte was a full ATX, where the ASRock was the ITX board. So that couldn't be helped. But look at the price difference of the CPU. 72% cheaper, and you only lose 10 to 11% total average GPU scores. Now, the CPU, you lose more, right? And so maybe once you dig in and you figure out that it's just a little too slow to do the following tasks, and maybe you might need to upgrade. But when you're looking at what the GPU can do, it only knocks down your productivity by 10 or 11%. And you end up with reasonable game settings, I think, and still get 90 plus FPS. So this is very doable, right? So can you do a budget system in 2025? I think so. Um, with this system, I made some changes after putting it together and running these tests. So I ended up changing out of what I... Uh, uh, called it the 10 can system. I like that case. I'm going to use that case for something else. But if I was going to sell this system, I don't really like the way that the uh, CPU cooler was set up. And so I changed the case. I bought another case, um, <clears throat> another thermal take case. Actually, it was cheaper. It was the V21. It was a uh, more of a cube case. I didn't realize how wide that case was, but there's room for days in that thing. And it's modular, so you can actually stack two of them together and have this huge water cooling setup. And so what I did was, just to make sure that it was rock solid stable, I put in one of my D5 water pumps and the Heat Killer, Fro Heat Killer 4 Pro water block that I previously done my testing with would easily cool this and do a reasonable job at the i9 if you wanted to change the CPU. And you had a full custom loop setup um, that you could use. And this thing used two um, 240 millimeter radiators and, and a single loop just to cool the CPU. And because the GPU is not water cooled yet, I don't know if they'll actually need to make a water cooler for a 5070, but if they wanted to, up, if somebody wanted to update this uh, system with a much bigger GPU, much bigger CPU, and go up to a 14th Gen i9, 14900K or KS, it's ready to plug in and go. And I actually posted it for sale, and you will believe the, the number of people like, well, that, that CPU is really holding it back. I'm just showing you that it's not. It's not. Um, if you're going to do CPU-intensive workloads and rendering, uh, 3D and heavier workloads like that. Yeah, you don't want to mess around with this. But for just a usual budget system, play some games, do some office tasks, uh, do some basic content creation for YouTube, it will do it and do it just fine. You will lose some performance, but I showed you the numbers. I'm a little shocked that it, do it does as well as it does, to be honest with you. That shows you how much the GPU weighs in. And it's a mid-tier GPU, and it really carries the system along. But again, you got a mid-tier GPU and a low-tier CPU in a system that's ready to have those two pieces changed out, and you've got similar performance to one of my systems, um, i9-14900K. Like it, it wouldn't take much to change it if you needed to in the future. So anyway, with that, uh, this was a fun, this was fun study. <clears throat> so I, uh, I appreciate everyone's time. Hope you found this thing interesting. Um, I've got it listed for sale. I probably am not going to sell it because everybody thinks they just have to have the latest and greatest CPU. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Probably just hold on to it for a little bit, maybe give it to family. Um, but nonetheless, uh, with that, stay, uh, stay safe. God bless.